My name is Lisa Ross, though you may know me better as Paper Daisy Creations, and today I'm going to be showing you how to work the conch stitch, or conch stitch as you may pronounce it. So you can see right here I've got my main color still attached, and I'm going to be working with C1, which is also still attached. Now I've been carrying that C1 up the back of the work, and I'm going to show you how I do that, um, because that is a tip that will help you a lot with the rest of this project and with any other projects that use multiple colors. So I'm going to work the first stitch as normal, so I knit one, and now on my next stitch, I'm going to go into that stitch, I'm going to cross my main color, which is the yarn that I'm carrying, over the needle, and then I'm going to knit the stitch. And what that does is it uh, locks this, this color into place behind the work so that it's not creating like a, a strange ruffle or, um, or mixing up the colors along the edges. So this is going to create a nice neat edge and I'll show you that once I get finished with this row. So the conch stitch is going to be worked um, over the course of two rows. So we're going to do our right side rows which involve adding extra length to our stitches and then we're going to do our wrong side row which is going to work those long stitches together to create this beautiful shell shape and really enhance our knitting. So the row begins with a make one left. So I'm going to go ahead and work that. So I did my K2, my M1L, and now I'm going to slip one stitch. Whenever I'm slipping stitches, it is almost always purl-wise. Um, if it will be knit-wise, that would be indicated in the pattern. So this will be slip one purl-wise with the yarn in back. And what that does is keeps the float behind the work rather than in front. Now sometimes you want that beautiful float to be in the front as a decorative piece, but for this we do not. The conch stitch is going to be worked over the next five stitches on the needles. One, two, three, four, five. And we're actually going to do the same thing to all five of those stitches. And here's what we're going to do. So we're going to knit that stitch, but instead of just yarning over and knitting one like we normally would, we're going to yarn over, wrap it around two times, three times. So what I have here are three wraps around the needle and all of those are going to go through the stitch. So I'm going to show you that again. Actually, I'm going to show you that four more times because that's how we're making our conch stitch. So when you go in, you don't just pick up the yarn and pull it through. You wrap one, two, three, and you should see three wraps along your needle and then you pull it through. Now you don't want to pull these too tightly because we're going to have to be getting them back up over the needles in a little bit. Um, so just be sure you're wrapping, but not too tightly. So I go into the next stitch, I wrap one, sorry, one, two, three, and I pull it out. And I'm going to do that again. I go into the next stitch, I wrap one, two, three, and I pull it through. And so far, you can count, I've got one, two, three, four bundled stitches. So you can see how those wraps create these little bundles of stitches. One, two, three, four. So I need one more. I go in, I wrap one, two, three, and I pull it out. And now I've got my first bundle, my first, uh, right side pattern for the conch stitch. I've got five bundles of stitches. I'm going to slip one with yarn in back and I'm going to work that again. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's three bundles. One, two, three, four bundles. One, two, three. There are five bundles. 
I slip one with yarn and back, and I'm just going to show you how that patterning looks. So it's going to create a very full row as I create these, um, the right side row conch stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and work all the way across to the end. Um, keep working those conch stitches, putting your slipped stitches in between. It's also great for helping you to track your stitches by having those slip stitches in between and then I will rejoin you on the wrong side row. All right so here we are finished with the right side row. We have all these lined up stitches with the slip stitches in between. You should have one, two, three, four, five sets of those elongated stitches and on this next row we're going to be um, unwrapping them and then working those stitches together. So I'm going to flip it over to the back. Over here you can see where the yarn was carried. You can see that it is um, not right along the edge. It's just going to carry right up the inside just like this red band right there. You won't see that at all from the front by carrying the yarn <clears throat> as I showed you at the beginning of the row. All right, so we're on the wrong side and let's get going. We're going to knit the first two just as the pattern states, sorry, knit the first three. And now we're going to be slipping the next stitch. Now we do not want floats in the front of the work for this stitch. I want them all in the back. So I hold the yarn toward the right side, which in this case, or I'm sorry, hold the yarn toward the wrong side of the work. In this case, that is um, to the front because we are looking at the wrong side. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I'm going to slip that with the yarn in front, slip purlwise once again, yarn in front. All right, and now I'm ready to work my conch stitch. So I've got, I, I'm going to be unraveling these by slipping them purlwise onto the right needle like this. So I pull the first one and it makes one long stitch. That's one. I reach under the next stitch. I pull it off the needles onto the right needle. Now there are two. So I'm only reaching under that first strand right there. I'm not, I'm not reaching into all three. I'm just tugging at that one strand so that I can unravel them. So there's three, four, and five. And you can see now I've got five stitches and they actually look all a little bit different in length, shortest to longest. And that actually helps create the look of this stitch. So now I'm going to slip them back onto the left needle. I'm going to slip them all purlwise. So I want to put that needle through all five. I can double check one, two, three, four, five. Got them all right there. So they're all back on the left needle now. My yarn is still carried. It was uh, slipped in, in the front of the work. And now I need to go into all five of these stitches and I'm going to work five stitches. Into all of these, I'm going to gather them together and knit five together first with K1, P1, K1, P1, K1. And it's a little tricky the first time you do it, but you're going to be doing this a lot and you're going to get the hang of it really fast. All right, so I've got my five stitches. I have to be sure I go into all five. You can double check. You don't have any loose strands, so I'm in all five of those stitches. I'm going to knit one. I swing the yarn over here to do purl one. Again, going through all five of those stitches. I'm swinging the yarn back to do a knit one and purl one. Okay, that's four stitches so far. I need one more. I've got to do my knit one. That's how I end. All right, and then I remove all of those five stitches from the needles. I have one, two, three, four, five. All right, and here's how it looks on the front at the moment, but it's going to look a bit different as we get going. All right, so I'm back to this front stitch, or I'm sorry, I'm back to slipping the yarn in front to slip this next stitch. So I slip one, 
And now again, I want to make all of these stitches elongated. So I reach under, I pull, I tug each string. One, two, three, four, five. I've got them all. One, two, three, four, five. I put this needle through those purl wise. Make sure you've got one, two, three, four, five strings. All right, and now I'm going to be working all five of those together. And so just as you would knit and purl, you're going to be working all five of these stitches together. So I'm going to knit one, purl one. Again, make sure you go through all five stitches. As you do, there's going to be a hole that, become, that goes into the middle, and that's what you're going into. So I've done K1, P1, K1, P1, and then one more time, K1. So I'm evening out my stitch count as I go. There we go. I've got my five stitches. Okay, one thing I want to show you um, is that as you are working this stitch, you're going to be needing to slide stitches from your cable onto the left needle. And I will be honest, this is the hardest part of doing this stitch, in my opinion. So what happens is you've wrapped that yarn several times and that center wrap really wants to hang on tightly um, to the cord. So sliding those stitches onto the left needle, that's actually the trickiest part. But, you know, you get used to just twisting back and forth, much like if you um, are used to working magic loop or um, working in the round where you have to adjust those stitches and, and get them back over that needle. Uh, one possibility that could help you out if you're really struggling is if you use interchangeable needles you could switch this needle just for that row to a smaller size to make it easier to get those um, onto the needle and work this work the stitch okay so i am back at the beginning of the row uh, i have my conch shells along here and the only thing I want to remember is that when I work my next row I want to have to be I want to be careful to work those stitches in order they have a tendency to kind of climb on top of one another and you just need to be sure that you work them in the in the order that they were knit so just kind of spread those apart and work those and I'm going to show you one more time how I do the um, carrying your yarn up the side because we are switching to the main color but we are not breaking color one and so I knit the first stitch and then for that second stitch I loop the color one that I'm going to carry over the needle I knit with my main color. And then the, uh, the next stitch is going to lock that into place. So I'm going to go ahead and do my make one left, which locks that yarn right into the back there. It's connected. Okay, so I'm gonna show you that one more time. I'm gonna undo those two stitches. All right, so I've done my first one and getting ready to do the second one. So this time I'm uh, doing it, holding the yarn in my right hand, like you um, English style throwers would do. Uh, I am going to cross it over the needle. I'm holding onto that with my left hand and now I'm going to work that stitch. <laughs> You can see this is not my strong suit. I don't have the same kind of muscle memory. There we go. I work that stitch and then working my make one left is going to lock that into place. 
I'm gonna cheat and use my left hand. Here we go to work that make one left. All right, but it does the same thing. It connects it to the back, not right along the very edge and helps you carry that yarn. And now I'm just going to be working my main color all the way across, working these stitches as I come to them in order, kind of spreading them out as needed, working them over those needles. And it will look like this. Thank you so much for joining me. You can find all of my patterns on Ravelry.com or on PaperDaisyCreations.com. Again, my name is Lisa Ross, and I'm wishing you all happy knitting.